we decided to go to Peru, we knew we had to spend a few days in the Amazon. Yes, you can't go to Peru and say, no, I don't want to go to the Amazon. Right. Let's not go to that river. <laughs> so we booked a two-hour flight from Lima to Iquitos, mm -hmm. and waiting for us was Manatee Expeditions, this awesome tour company. We booked a four-day, three-night stay with them. After picking us up from the airport, we got a cool walk through this port town and tried local food. They were awesome because our flight was very delayed, and we'll get into that at some other point. Mm, don't uh, talk about it. Yeah, but they did set us up with a speedboat that got us to our first location. So our first stop was a doozy. It was Monkey Island, which is a sanctuary for monkeys that have been kept as pets or otherwise in bad situations. They keep them here and whenever possible they release them back into the wild. Pretty cool place. You get to hang out with monkeys. If there is any rule, you just don't walk up and try to catch the monkeys. But for the most part, they come to you and will walk on you, lick you, and hang out with you. We're walking through the... Yeah, it's on. <laughs> That's why my hair looks like that. <laughs> yeah, the, you don't need to explain why your hair is a mess, babe. I think we, we're getting it at, at this point. So apparently monkeys love to lick. We don't know if the shine on me is sweat or monkey spit. It's, you know, it's probably a little bit of everything. <laughs> There's a sloth here too, and a cantankerous parrot. Ow, ow. Monkey Island was one of our favorite parts of the trip, but you can't take the monkeys home. I know. Usually, I buy you a drink first or something, but I mean, that's fine. <laughs> Speaking of drinks, we were ready for one after this long day, and so after a short boat ride with a beautiful sunset, we were at Manatee Eco Lodge deep in the Amazon jungle. And I got my drink. So the Eco Lodge is about a dozen of these cabins set in the most amazing little space of the jungle. Think of it kind of like summer camp. So the cabins have like screened in walls. There is running water, but no warm water. Um, there's only electricity a couple hours a day, so you can charge your phones and have light at night and things like that. So it's rustic, but obviously absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, they had preset meal time. So you get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And they had drinks included like coffee and tea. Um, water and let me tell you this don't drink the water out there or brush your teeth with the water because it may turn into something <laughs> it can come back to haunt it you it can come back to haunt you and uh, I'm not gonna say it happened to me but I am gonna say that it's nice to get some Imodium AD from a very nice uh, fellow guest at the resort but the food was amazing they caught fresh fish and fresh local fruit there was a gorgeous hammock room you could have coffee in the whole resort was beautiful yeah we ate like kings it was awesome First full day in the Amazon, we took a short boat ride up to spend some time with the Yaguas tribe. The chief greeted us. We didn't know what he was saying, but it was a beautiful introduction. <laughs> The chief painted our faces from a mixture from some local fruit, and I got to use a blow dart gun. <laughs> Now this is obviously one of those pre-set up tours. It ends with time touring around shops with handicrafts made by the local people. The Yaguas tribe lives very modern lives for the most part now, but they are doing what they can to preserve their culture and their language, and so it was awesome to be able to support them doing that. After our visit with the tribe, we got to go back to our resort and hang out for a little bit before we took off on our jungle trek. And we left right out of the back area of our resort, which is super cool. And we had this amazing tour guide who was with us the whole trip, uh, Alfredo. Mm -hmm. Alfredo was awesome, especially if Alfredo had a couple drinks. Yeah, <laughs> which happened a couple times. It did. He's amazing. He's been with the tour company for a long time, and he knows this jungle like the back of his hand. He's been doing it for 35 plus years. Yeah, he's something in like papers that. from way back in the day. Yeah, it's, it's amazing the stories this guy had. And he could point out every little thing in the jungle, name it, you know, tell you what kind of medicinal properties it had. Yeah, that helped me out once, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> cool. 
So this little couple hour trek right out the back door of our resort was a great way to get a good taste of the Amazon and it was a great way to finish our second day in the jungle. I did not know this, but there are such a thing as pink dolphins. Yeah, well only here in yeah. the Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, so in the beginning of our third day, we set out in the morning and we got glimpses of these elusive creatures. Yeah, and you don't see a whole lot, pardon our, our quality <laughs> here. We're not professional cinema photographers. There it is. There it is. There, it is. there, there goes one. Woo. And there, we saw about two or three. And let, let's, let it be known, they are not attractive. <laughs> now, when I was younger, there was always some horror movie that involved piranhas. There's Piranha 1, Piranha mm -hmm. 2, Piranha 3. Quality and film. Quality film. There's Revenge of Piranha, Don't Go in the Water. And it was all pretty much, they lived in the Amazon River. And if you go in the water, they'll eat you or you die. Yeah, they will kill you. So much not really the case. People actually did go in the water. There are people on the shore running around, swimming, having a great old time. Nobody was being eaten by piranha. Right, so we decided to go fish for some. Yeah, so. Because it sounded like fun. I say we turn the tables and eat the piranha right. instead of the piranha <laughs> eat the people. So we did this. Yes, we both caught piranha. Chris's was a little bigger than mine. <laughs> Yeah, but, and they are dead. Look at that. That's scary. So we all got to take our kill back to the lodge. They cooked it up for us. We ate it for dinner that night. Yes, they were very bony fish, but very good. Yummy. White yeah. fish. Yeah, right? And I, revenge is sweet. So after piranha fishing, the plan was to set out on a trek to go even deeper into the jungle. And then it started to pour rain. And so some of us weren't sure if this was still going to happen, but Alfredo was not happy. Yeah, that guy was pretty diehard, and he really just wanted you to see everything and really take in the Amazon. Right, so some people in our group stayed back home, but we set out short boat trip and then a long hike. We had a stopover at this little village along the way while we waited for it to stop raining a little bit, and then we continued on our way. We really don't have many pictures or videos from the rest of the trek because it was cold. Yeah, and when we got to our location, this is what we were greeted with, a very long snake that was in our hut waiting to prove us. Yeah, falling down out of the ceiling over yeah. the spot exactly where we ended up sleeping that night. But it's okay because there was netting and obviously nettings will keep the snakes away. And one guy that happened to be in our group apparently was some type of snake wrangler and insisted that this guy was non-venomous. Yeah, and it was fine. We obviously didn't lose any sleep over it. And so then after a, a not very peaceful night of sleep, but yeah. it was a very cool experience, we took a canoe trip further up the river, deeper into the jungle. Mm -hmm. And then you can see this narrow little river through the jungle to get us to our next destination, which was this awesome tower overlooking a big stretch of jungle. And what's amazing too is that, it, although it did rain, it was really not that cold. It, it was uh, actually kind of warm. Yeah. So it was, it was very nice, it was cool. And it did not rain on our second day of our overnight trip. Right. So uh, we got to have an awesome view of the jungle. There weren't a lot of birds. Apparently there used to be a big bird sanctuary there. So we didn't get to see that part of it, but we had awesome views of the jungle. And of course, all this crazy wildlife and plant life you see along the way. A few other highlights from that trip. Uh, our guide, Alfredo, uh, would sing a song to us, which was pretty amazing. They actually made, they brought food and made our dinner out of, I, I forgot what it was, was it potatoes? Banana leaves. Banana leaves, yeah. It was all done for us and it was the best thing ever. And then, oh, it was a night of seeing fireflies. We didn't sleep a whole lot just because of you're in a room with, what, 10 other people? Yeah. And on very thin little mats, but that's kind of the experience. So it makes it all worth it. And when we hiked back out the next morning, thankfully it wasn't raining, and so we got to enjoy a lot more of the beautiful view before we set out on a boat ride back to the cabin for the last time. I, I lost track of how many insects, bugs, animals. I don't exactly know what to do here. Yeah, all the stuff we saw, you lose track. But one of the things that kind of stood out was this little guy. As we were walking back from our overnight, he just flew right next to my head and landed in front, and then just started following us back to our little huts. Chris is known as the bird whisperer. He tends to attract them wherever we go and they become friends. So this is just another example of that. So yeah, pretty just awesome. some wild bird and then hung out with us for quite a while and actually let me pet him, so he's cool. I named him Frank. So all in all, we definitely highly recommend Manatee Expeditions and I feel like our trip was the perfect length, four days and three nights. You definitely wouldn't want to try to do this in a night or two because it's too much travel time to get there and back. But 
after four nights, four days, you're pretty much ready for a hotel. And <laughs> we headed back to Lima. So um, one cool thing too is that we ended up becoming friends with people that we met on this trip. We still stay in touch with them today. So hi, Jared. Was, yeah, hi, Jared. <laughs> so that was a really cool bonus. And also, for those of you that are not as adventurous as we, we may be, and uh, Brooke is more adventurous than I am, <laughs> there are people that went to Manatee that literally just hung out in the lodge and walked on their own. They didn't go on any of the tours. They could do whatever they wanted right. to do so and that was cool too. you could make it more mellow Yeah, if you, you could sit to. there and just yeah. enjoy the, the jungle, which is totally fine as well. And then we had a boat ride back up the river before we got back to Iquitos where we got to ride in a tuk-tuk, take us back to the airport. It was an awesome little ending to our trip. We hope you guys liked this video. Thank you so much. Comment, like, dislike, subscribe, do it all. Thanks so much. And if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them in the comments because we hope you guys can go and experience this trip too.